Hi, I'm Josh Vogel. I just wanted to film a quick tip that I think will help uh, the way you think about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which I think is the most important part of, of learning Jiu-Jitsu. Um, the idea that if you, if you are trying to out-attribute your opponent, um, so for example, if you're training with somebody who is stronger than you, faster than you, um, taller than you, whatever, like has some sort of physical advantage over you, whether it's speed or strength or power or whatever, um, or just body dimensions, um, rather than trying to beat them at the thing that they're strong at, you can take the approach of trying to make them weaker or trying to make them slower or trying to make them, you can't make somebody shorter, but like you kind of get where I'm going with this. Um, so rather than like me trying to be faster in a scramble than somebody who is very, very fast in a scramble or trying to overpower somebody in half guard who's got very powerful limbs and, and their limbs can't really be easily moved. The idea is you want to use techniques to overcome overcome these things. And people say techniques meaning like, you know, like a move. But what I'm talking more about is like, okay, so if somebody's stronger than me, how can I make them weaker and make myself as strong as possible at the same time? I can make myself as strong as possible by making sure that my body is aligned properly. So making sure that, you know, each alignment is going to be different depending on what position and situation you're in. But like, for example, if I'm trying to do, um, if I'm trying to do a squat with 200 pounds on my shoulders and my spine is twisted and my knees are bent in and my back is all jacked up and my head's cocked to the side all weird, I'm not going to be very strong for squatting that 200 pound weight, right? What I would do is align my body properly so that my body architecture can support the weight much better. And so that makes me as strong as possible. I'm lining my bones and muscles up in such a way that they can support each other as best as possible. And then making somebody weaker is about doing the opposite to them. So if I saw somebody squatting 200 pounds and I wanted to make it more difficult for them to squat 200 pounds, I could push one of their knees in or I could start twisting their head or I could start you know, doing something with their, their lower back uh, or their arms to misalign them and put them out of position. And then I probably get it kicked out of Planet Fitness for doing that, but y you get the idea of where I'm going with it. So misaligning your partner's skeleton is a good way to make them weaker while aligning your skeleton for maximum um, leverage and strength is a good way to make yourself as strong as possible. So coming at it from both of those angles, you can take somebody who's very, very strong and put their arm in a position where their arm is no longer as strong and make them weaker by doing that, or you can twist their spine in such a way that they can't, let's say, bridge effectively with the same strength that they would normally bridge, or hook on one of their legs and twist their knee so that they can no longer put shoulder pressure into your face as effectively. And then slowing somebody down is about finding ways to either make them think about too many things at the same time. So for example, uh, I'm sure you've noticed like when you're driving down the street or driving on a highway um, and your GPS directions are slow and there's an exit that you're not, that you might, that might be the one you're supposed to take or it might be the next exit. You got two choices, keep on going or take the exit and you start to freeze a little bit because you're not sure which one to do. It's sort of the same thing in jujitsu. Um, some people call like John Danaher and those guys call it like forcing a dilemma on your partner. Um, you know, you can call it creating a fork in the road, whatever. The, the point is always the same that you're trying to give, make your partner choose between in a perfect world, multiple bad options. So if I do this, I get guillotined. If I do this, I get swept. Um, and in a less than ideal world, just choosing between two or three options will slow them down and allow you to, you don't have to be faster, you're just making them slower by doing that. Another way to do the same thing is to off balance your opponent because every time you off balance your opponent, they're forced to choose between falling over and basing out. 
but they are not thinking about attacking you in that moment. So for example, if I'm on bottom of closed guard and my opponent goes to stand up and I quickly pull with my legs and off balance them forward, they have to choose between falling onto their face or posting out with their hands, but they're no longer focused on the standing guard pass just for that split second. So essentially, by off balancing them, I made them slower rather than having to make myself faster. So anyway, I wanna cut it short. That's kind of the gist of what I'm getting at. Um, try to focus on making yourself as, as strong as possible, making your opponent as weak as possible, making your opponent as slow as possible so that you don't have to be faster than them. You just have to slow them down. Give it a shot.